My fellow sheep, election season is upon us. Are you one of the 12% of Americans who still approves of our government? Then we need your help to force the other 88% into compliance. Our democracy depends on it. We're an organization called Citizens Against Too Much Unfettered Freedom, or CATMUF. CATMUF is a bipartisan flock of sheep whose goal is expanding government until nothing else remains. Because the government is here to help you. How can you help CATMUF help you? By only voting for candidates dedicated to expanding government. It's easy. You don't need to study the issues. No matter what a politician says when running for office, they're all dedicated to expanding government. And make sure you tell all your friends and family to vote for more government. Here at CATMUF, we don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican, as long as you vote for candidates committed to growing our federal family. CATMUF. Because folks just aren't smart enough to handle real freedom. My kids love the the food trucks fiasco one, and it's funny because they're one of their favorite parts of it is when the I don't remember if it's the kids or the adults realize that you know recognize that government's just taking the money and making things worse. Like they love repeating that. I'm like, yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> that's yes, right. Yes, yes, you're you're yeah. getting it. Brainwash your children like Dave brainwashes. It's so his obvious girlfriend. once you. Put- <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 117th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back after taking a late decision to have a week off last week. Um, But we're back. I'm Jeremy. I'm joined, as always, by Dave and Andre. What's up, guys? Hey, what's going on, man? Not much, Andre. Andre sounds a little off tonight. We don't know what ha- what happened to his microphone. Um, he's <laughs> we we assure you he's not calling in from the bottom of a well or a tin he can or something. He is in a submarine. He had to go back to duty and report. Yeah. Uh, some big stuff's happening. Uh, well, actually, I am I'm occupying my seasteaded property now. I'm oh. in international waters. Yeah. That's why, because I'm underneath a, the you, water you, right AWOL. now in my property. So it's you know that would explain kinda, a lot. That, okay. uh, the actually. reverb, you know, we should we should bouncing yeah. off the walls on the inside. We should we should have just gone with that. We should have led with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah. So if he's if he sounds off this week, that's why. But since we took the week off last week, uh, you know, we just we're just gonna press forward tonight. Um, our guest this week, we have uh, last cu- week was just a long week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These yeah, the, these two these two tapped out on me. Um, I, I was all ready to go. I mean, I wasn't. I, I was actually going to do a show by myself, <laughs> and then I just ended up sitting on my couch. And I, I think I played Final Fantasy VIII, and then. Any hope of doing any kind of show that night became a distant, um, you know, which I, I which I have to talk to you about that after the show because Final Fantasy VIII fucking rocks. But anyway, let's introduce Kyle. Yes, before yes. We get so too sidetracked. <laughs> our, our guest this week is Kyle Turnblazer, who is the host of the Liberty Forge podcast. Uh, Kyle, man, thanks for joining us tonight. Honk, honk. Yeah, man, excited to be here. What's up, guys? What's happening, man? Oh, not much. Oh, not uh, much, dude. Uh, I'm excited about hearing the news of your uh, fantastic seastead, Andre. Well, you know, it's one of those, uh, it's the way it's designed. It's what? Whale. What did you just say to me, Dave? Is that like squirrel when you're on the water? You said whale, you know. (laughs) Whale. Whale, you know. (laughs) No, it's one of those. It's one of those really cool ones. It's like a sphere, but it has a it has a disc around the center of it that it floats on. So it basically, can't be sunk. Yeah, yeah it's pretty. Oh, sweet. oh I've seen them. Yeah, I thought man. you just got together with cool. Merrick and threw a few barges together, like a bunch of maybe a dozen rusty old barnacle like barges Yacht with Club. pirate yeah, flags. Yeah, you know, I shit. I talked to him yeah, about that, and cool. he was like, "No, I got too many condos to clean." I was like, "I can appreciate that. I appreciate that. You, <laughs> you got to serve your customers. You got to serve your customers." Yeah. Dude. That man's busy making a dollar. Tis the season, you know. As as capitalists, we live to serve. That's what we do. So yeah. I can appreciate that. I can. 
Yeah, I, I yeah, know. yeah. But as soon as that season slows down, man, I want to see barges. Oh yeah, we're totally on it. We're totally yeah, on yeah, it. We're, we're stringing some barges together, and we're making a, a fucking territory. Oh, out, dude, out I'm, I want to create a Seastead <laughs> Kingdom ASAP. I'm, I'm hey man, we're I'm psyched about that. In the background, especially if you're talking about when the season's over this year, because by that time, I'll, I'll my business will be shut down. And I'll be free to travel. So uh, yeah, man, let's let's, let's MPGA, get started on this stuff. Make piracy great again. <laughs> there you go. I'm down for that, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I I, I I like the idea of the whole idea of seasteading. Uh, it's it's interesting. I was just listening to what was I? Oh, the Vanu podcast, which uh, we've had the the one of the co-hosts of that on the show mm-hmm. at least once. Yep. Shane Radliff. Shane um, Radliff. Yeah, he. Uh, they were. I know that's his big thing. He's he's a big fan of the whole seasteading seasteading idea, and uh, I think he's actually doing work with one of the seasteading projects, which is really cool. So. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I I really I really would love to if I can convince Merrick and like I don't know ten other people yeah. to get together so we can get a yeah. large Let's enough area it. to Let's grow our own water crops world and stuff. now. <laughs> water world the, just, now. We can't let Kevin Costner on though. Absolutely not. <laughs> hey, no, I want I want to see wave I want to see wave runners set up like Mad Max for sure. Shit! Yeah. Oh my it's god, that would be the best video game ever. Okay, number Hell one, you're yeah. gonna have to Holy find a way shit. to hide yourself from radar and shoot down drones. If you can't do those things, your seastead's going to fail. So, it, number one, those two problems have to be solved before you even start seasteading. Okay. Well, well see, what do you mean detect? Well, see, that's part of the. That's, I was going to say that's that's part of the problem, and I actually you just you triggered something in my mind, Dave, from listening to that podcast earlier today. Triggered. Um, the 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 one downside to to seasteading, unfortunately, is the lack of um, natural barriers you know, other than the water itself, um, being out in the open on, on the water, you, you do leave yourself vulnerable to being found by these, you know, the state, this state, whatever state at any point in time, you know, they can find your ass. Um, that's why, unfortunately, you know, that, that is the one downside to it. Now they were, they actually took it a step further. They were talking about, you know, going under the water. Now there you create an extra barrier, you create an extra natural barrier between you and the, you know, you, you and the, uh, uh, well, the, your your top, right? Your top of the water could be protected by like essentially a beehive of submarines under it. So like anything that comes around there, I'm talking, it doesn't matter if something can fly over you and drop bombs down that are going to blow you up. Like you got to be able to stop it or hide from it. Well, well okay. But I mean, what I don't do you, know what how do you much money you boys have, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I what know. I was, that's, that's what I was getting to say. I don't, I don't have like, you know. <laughs> I don't have a missile system. I don't have a missile defense system to to shoot down. I don't have a. a Look, we're just uh, trying to get this all together so we can sell it system. to Jeff Bezos, guys. That's the plan. Oh, yeah, right, yeah Mister right, right. Mister Richest Man in the World, right? I think that was that oh, announced yesterday that or today. I saw that way we can live on his first seastead and just be, you know, like in the coolest place in well, the world. Well, you know what? He could actually probably afford all of the defensive systems necessary to make that feasible. Like he probably could. I don't think he would. Or he, he has got access ninety one billion dollars. Have AI that could blackmail everybody. Yeah. I, think, I mean, well, I don't know. What's John McAfee doing? I'm sure he'd be down for this. Didn't he have a he heart attack? Did, he oh, no, did like, you see the news? Like he got almost on stabbed. Him. Yeah, that's what I saw. Oh, yeah, he got shit. put in the hospital, man. He got attacked, and his wife went all there was a hit on crazy him. on Twitter, like, we're going to fucking find you and kill you. Whoa. I was damned. Well, I mean, it's yeah, crazy, the same man. Way. Fuck. I caught a headline, but yeah, what? What do you know any more of it than that? He was just he was randomly stabbed he when was he was out talking about pedo gate. Oh, I just Ooh. I just read the about how I about seen, how to man, hack it was hack crazy this, about how to hack some of the stuff. I've already said it, guys. They algorithmically can spot any pedophile, basically anybody that has a shared habit of something. There's signifying algorithmic, you know, data that links you together, like. You may all just say this one esoteric word online that only people that know or have read this book know. You know what I'm saying? And that then puts you algorithmically (laughs) that puts you algorithmically into a category. So they they know everyone who's a pedophile or a suspected pedophile. They know everyone who smokes pot. They know everyone who does cocaine. They know do everyone who uh jacks off to uh weird, crazy porn. They just know. I mean, they just they got it. There's not you can't hide from it. Okay, I don't know what your point was about that though. <laughs> so who are My they? Are you was, talking about Google or I'm talking about the overlords. NSA, CIA? 
Those the uh, the, 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 the intelligence agencies. No, no mainly the, the intelligence agencies that you know have documented proof of this. Not I'm not talking about anything that's you know fantasy land or you know m we we have targeted evidence but no real proof. You know. So it's not the globalist lizard people. <laughs> Le listen, it it is not the uh, Illuminati. <laughs> They, uh, <laughs> yeah, yours is the way Illuminati are just concerned with turning the frogs gay. They're not look. They're oh, not God. taking their super male vitality, and that is the biggest problem. <laughs> okay, day in and day out, that is their biggest problem. And if they would just double up on their bone broth, they'd be a okay. <laughs> Bunch of slack jawed faggots. This stuff will make you a sexual tyrannosaurus. Just I was wondering oh how long gosh, it would take. Predator. I would, was was wondering how long it would take before Alex Jones showed up. Uh, all you have to do is hint at him; he'll show up. It's not. <laughs> you if you say, oh, if you yeah. say documents, out, Illuminati, NWO, of course or frogs I did. are gay. <laughs> it's, 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 listen, shows I didn't up. say that frogs are gay. I said that they are putting chemicals in the water that makes the frogs turn gay and stuff. And look, there's got to be something <laughs> to explain all this Super weird male stuff vitality. out here. Zers and shers and zers <laughs> and she's. It's getting oh, weird God, out there, folks. Podcast, that dude. <laughs> it's, it's getting weird out there, and, folks. It's getting weird in here, and, too, anyway, Alex. Kyle, thanks, Kyle. thanks for stopping by. Kyle. So, <laughs> What's up, Kyle? Anyways, oh. I got to go, guys. I got to go <laughs> catch a flight to uh, <laughs> somewhere out. And yeah, go go, ch go, check in with your, go check in with your buddy Donald. and uh, Check out, uh, well, check next check out the Hall of Worth and get back to us on how that is. But no, well, uh, I've Kyle, had the documents and I've had them for a long time, folks, but I got to go. Uh, so how's, how's it going? What have you uh, What have you been doing? What are you up to? Man, making money and trying to find time to record. Really, it's my entire okay. life right now. Uh, when I do get home on the weekends, that is family time, no work, period, whatsoever. So everything I do as far as uh, the website and the podcast and all that is done out of the truck. And uh, it's in a different place every time i do any work record edit publish anything like that so it's uh, it's pretty guerrilla style wait yeah, okay never, that's, that's what i was fixing to say you have a mobile command center where you do all this shit that's yeah. fuck that is based as fuck <laughs> that's what it's i call like it your submarine <laughs> but it's on land it's, yeah, yeah but it's on land yeah that's cool so for, the, for those who don't know yeah, yeah. i just kind of break into the 4g on my phone for the uh, laptop like i'm doing right now i'm in where am i corbin kentucky and I'm close enough Ooh. to a cell tower to That's truck the stop to get enough the internet nervous. to run on Fiend Phone, man. Yeah. When I did that one with Lou, I was in Eureka, Nevada, the very center of Nevada. It's nothing but high desert, but there's one town that has a, a cell phone tower, and I parked right under it. So, yeah, pretty <laughs> much anywhere I can get signal, we're, we're doing the show, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's pretty intense. I, so I love you parked under the cell phone tower. Did you have like the best reception ever? Yeah, ever in the middle of the high desert. <laughs> well, your car basically was like it had a big antenna on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't think Peterbilt makes cars, Dave. Yeah, no. Yeah, as I was gonna say for the, for the, for those who ha who haven't followed along, yes, Kyle actually. Yeah, my bad. He, he he drives a big rig and he does his podcast out of there, which really is fucking amazing um especially because you know it is. it's, it's so an eighty thousand. Cool. it's an eighty thousand pound murder machine with a big stainless steel cow catcher on the front of it <laughs> god yes <laughs> i like it yeah I no it, man I mean, stop stop my penis can only get so erect <laughs> so like if uh somebody was so, so somebody was like hey i want to check out the uh the kyle turnblazer podcast what would be the number one episode you'd be like check this one out first before you judge my podcast. <sighs> Depending on context, man, I've had a couple of really great guests on already. Uh, I've only got seven episodes out. Number eight comes out Monday, probably a day or two after this publishes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, episode four had a really great old old school homeschool and family on. Um, episode six i had kyle mccormick he's a member of the libertarian party um we got to pick on each other i called him and walter block filthy voters and he told me i was standing in the end yes. zone saying this is where you guys should be <laughs> <laughs> nice we nice. had a good time though man it's 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 good stuff man i'm i'm getting a lot of opportunities to talk to folks and i'm really really enjoying it making lots of good connections and learning a lot along the way too yeah i've thoroughly enjoyed the show i've i've listened to all your episodes so far and uh 
I, I don't even know if, if, like you said, you know, you said if you had to pick, if Dave's asking to pick one, I don't even know who which one I would pick. I thought they, I, th- I thought that all been good. I mean, just so just start number one. Is it like the Prof CJ one? Or just start with episode number one. Yeah, you could you could start there. I mean, like <laughs> sure. you said, there's there's only seven start out not right Prof now. Not CJ, just CJ's Dangerous History Podcast. Yes, I love that one. I've actually yeah. been. I know. I know he's been. Yeah, there's really just want to go. Wow, well, I was completely lied to. Go watch that or listen to that one. Yeah. Uh yeah yeah I I like his work with uh oh the ones he the one he did with Smedley Butler I think that's still one of my favorite ones mm-hmm. yeah yeah that one was good and the Ronald Reagan one was good and then the follow the whole Rome series was good a Civil War series was good too yeah man. that one yeah that that's one of my favorites the Civil War one and uh, yeah it's really I, it's strong just choir preaching to me man I'm just like ah. <sighs> No, there was there was still yeah, things I, I still I still learn things though. That was that's why that's why I found it so fascinating because I you know as I've discussed before my my end to to anarchy and stuff like that was through history, and uh, you know so I I know a decent amount about these things and I've studied a lot of this stuff, but I still managed to learn stuff by listening to him. But that's why I continue to listen to him and a uh, couple other people too because um, Dan Carlin's another one. If you listen to his podcast, you you learn a hell of a lot of shit. <laughs> Uh, those things mm-hmm. are insane. Um, yeah, those two are great podcasts. And also, uh, Daniele Bellelli's. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that one. Um, but you have to you have to be able to get through his very thick Italian accent to be able to, <laughs> to be able to listen to that. Um, but he's another great. Yeah, yeah. I actually subscribe to that one. I do like it. Yeah, I, I just finally caught so, up on uh, the last two. He's he's cur- Dan, his one uh, history on fire. He's currently doing one on the. Uh, the conquest of Mexico by the Spanish, but you know, Cortez and Montezuma and all that stuff and uh, mm-hmm. fascinating stuff. So yeah, it's, it's great to be, I able. have really got to catch up on listening to podcasts. <laughs> Fuck. So it's well, tough, I'm, man. If I, you have I can legally, I can legally drive 11 hours a day. I can legally be on duty for 14 hours a day. So mindlessly turning a steering wheel, yeah, I've got time to hit a couple. Of <laughs> See, you you have Hell even more yeah. time. You have even more time than I do. I've always said that I, you know, I have an advantage to, over people because I spend like six to eight hours a day either walking dogs or in my right. car driving to walk dogs. So that entire time, I can be listening to podcasts. Uh, but you ha- you have even more. Yeah, there than- there are times when I get yeah there are times when I get caught up on my podcast and I'm like, all right, I'm bored. I've heard every song that was ever put on Pandora. This. <laughs> sucks oh and i go to mises like they have audiobooks that don't cost any money yes <laughs> so we do that yeah. too. wait yeah. yeah i listen yeah, I'll, that's I'll how i got through to conceived a, a in liberty book. that 1500 page monster oh Jesus, wow man that's that's probably how i, yeah, I, still, I wouldn't i started reading i started actually reading that a couple of years ago and i didn't get for, i got a couple hundred pages in and i'm like oh my god this is gonna take a while oh i so, have it i own it i bought i bought the hardcover all four volumes in <laughs> one big murder weapon and uh, I, I, I would I would start to doze off. I'm like I can't do this. <laughs> no, I, I think it's like I had to do uh, it on the, audio. Uh, War and Peace. I, I think I might have to listen to it that way though, because uh, I, I forgot. I, I see. Yeah. I know that I should know that too, because my co-host on the Fiends, Diana Kyler, used to read for Mises. Um, she used to do some of mm-hmm. a lot of the audio books, and I, I forget that they're there all the time. <laughs> okay, so here's my question: How long was that audio? Like how many oh. hours long was it? Because reading fifteen hundred no pages, idea. I can do a lot faster. Well, tell than everyone what book you're talking about, so they're you did conceived not- in liberty. Conceived in liberty. Oh. It's a four volume uh, kind of a history work um, as far as colonization to the Revolutionary War by Murray Rothbard, mm-hmm. and it's thorough, it's dry, and it's boring. But holy shit, there's a lot of good stuff in there. And and by oh, the yeah, way, it's and, packed with information. And, and by the way, I, I actually listened to a recent Tom Woods episode where they were mentioning where they were mentioning this again, and it reminded me of something about that. That um, that was actually a um, a side project for him while he was in the middle of doing a bunch of other yeah. things. He just decided one day that there should <laughs> be this this work because there wasn't one, and he just you know in his <laughs> spare yeah. he, in his spare time he wrote a fifteen hundred page you know. Yeah, if anybody accuses Murray Rothbard of being lazy at any point in time, they're so full of shit and have no idea what they're talking about. That oh, yeah. And he still had enough shit. time to follow basketball. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. And he respond was, to letters was, yeah. by hand. Yep. 
<laughs> Sna- yeah, God, snail mail, snail mail letters. Responded to him, and uh, yeah, and he wrote, he wrote that in his oh. spare time. And there was there was there was, he was working on a fifth of uh, the fifth volume when he died. I, when he died, I think I think there was supposed to be a fifth part of that that he never actually finished. Good lord, I'm gonna have to read it now. Or listen, probably. Yeah, you, sh- you I should. Do it while it's I a farm. lot. Of- yeah, I was gonna say listening is probably. It's, gonna it's be a much lot of those. You, there's a lot of little snippets in it, in like, you know, two or three paragraph sections that you could definitely highlight, make a note, and go back to it in case you ever needed to uh, like reference it. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a couple, <clears throat> there's a couple paragraphs in there that talk about. Uh, I'm gonna get the date wrong. 1600 and something. Um during colonization before you Mm -hmm. know any of the gangster shit kicked off that if if you didn't school your children the way that the church or the state or the community or whatever wanted you to they'd straight grab your kids so cps is not anything new this is 400 years old wow yeah the puritans Mm. were all about that shit Uh, oh yeah yeah. same (laughs) shit Same shit. But the, I, you know, you knew that when you were living there, though, you could pack up and leave and start your own community somewhere. You know, well, right, right. That's, right. Then you have that's to the other point to make. Indians. You could, you could literally go and homestead land in the woods somewhere. Well, yeah, but you oh, were taking yeah. it. You were taking a tremendous risk at that point. <laughs> this is this is true because it was it true, was but... it was hard enough to it was hard enough to start building those colonies at first. You know, get them started, and you know, and with the division of labor, be able to to work together to do stuff like that. You know, but then you're taking the risk of being off somewhere in the woods. Sure, you, sure, you can grab a plot of land and uh, be off by yourself, but then you're also isolated. Um, then you have to deal with wild animals and possibly Indians who may not be too happy about you. You know, entering the, their, their territory. Indians. So, uh, you well, know. actually, to be to be fair, back then, there the population density of native tribes was incredibly low. So, I mean, there's a lot there's a lot that's been made about you know Indian tribes and like native nations and all the rest of that and stuff. They traded like, really, most truly, of the land away. Well, not only that, but like they were ravaged by plagues that were carried over from Europe centuries beforehand. Like when first contact was made. I mean, smallpox wiped out whole populations of Native Americans. The Romans were there without first. anybody touching them. So, but I mean, it, it, but yeah, no, I totally understand. It, it was a huge risk, but you still could. You could just literally like, okay, well, I screw you too, buddy. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish. Yeah, there's places I, I in I East Tennessee now. you Damn. can still do that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good old days. yeah. So, this is true. Kyle, yeah. let me ask you a question. Who's the dream guest on uh, the uh, the show there, bud? Uh, except for Dream Jeremy Hamler. guest. <laughs> well, you know, Jeremy's number me, one, obviously. but uh obviously. Yeah. I was gonna say Merrick von Landingham. I'm actually having him on a second time here in a couple of weeks. Ooh, <laughs> really? Damn it, I wish I'd be on that show. <laughs> oh. oh well, we already did the interview, man. Uh <clears throat> I don't know, man. I mean, I'm always looking for people. You can come on. It's no you know. Just yeah. hit me up. Well, cool. So, so what got you into the the liberty, uh, wanting to talk about it and stuff? Like, what was the what was the the straw that broke the camel's back? One of my old driving jobs, and this was four, almost four years ago, was running a uh, a transfer Jones from Knoxville CIA? to Atlanta. No, shit, they wouldn't have made it to the CIA, son. I'll tell you that. <laughs> was running a transfer from Knoxville to Atlanta five nights a week. So Atlanta traffic five nights a week. Lovely. Jesus. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, all that time stuck uh, in traffic. I got turned on to this, this app somebody told me about called Stitcher. And, you know, I, I found some stuff on there. It was cool, whatever. But then that made me think, well, I could probably get audiobooks and stuff. And these libertarian people that I had just kind of became aware that they existed were talking about Murray Rothbard. And that's the gateway drug for everybody, right? For new liberty. Those damn libertarians. <laughs> yeah, man. that's what it was. For that's new what, liberty that's what was, it was my for real. That was my real yeah. first foray. Yeah. No, I've I I bought a few books because I got this habit, right? I'll 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 listen to the audio book for free, and if I say "damn, that's good," I have to put it in my hands. <clears throat> I'll go to Mises. I'll buy it and have it just sitting at the house, like. Okay, I own it now. I know everything that's in it, but I've never actually read the words in the book. Um, but but I have to own it. Yeah, it's it. So, different. I, uh, yeah, it's different for your brain mimetically to see those words on paper. Actually, you absorb it uh-huh. completely differently. Well, yeah, you know, believe it or not. 
I'm with you though. You, Kyle. The, the the highest rate of absorption is to rewrite something. It's 25 yeah. times yeah. more uh, effective than anything else. Yes, thank yeah. you, Dave. <laughs> That's no, why right. I write taxes. Yeah, I'm not writing a book anytime so much. soon. <laughs> no, I'm 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 with you though, Kyle. I'm kind of the same way. Even even if I even if I have listened to it or if, or if I've read a you know a free PDF version, if I'm if I'm real, you know, if it's something I'm really uh, impressed with or something that you know I, I have that aha moment or whatever, I I have to do the same thing, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, a lot for myself, but even more so since my kids have been around, I, I just started doing that because uh, there were certain books I wanted to make sure I had um, in case, you know, so, you know, in case something ever happened, like, you know, the grid going down and not having access to all these other things, um, you know, or if the totali- yeah. if the totali- tota- ooh, totalitarian state gets too insane and, you know, book burnings become a thing and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, certain yeah, things. Yeah, and now that we're homeschooling both kids, you know, I want to have that kind of literature laying around the house, you know what I mean? Cause- exactly, yeah. Yeah, lessons for a few hours a day, and then you know my my oldest one, my son, he reads a lot. Like, let's just scatter this shit around the coffee table. He'll pick it up one day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like that idea because, like I said, I I do the same thing. It's it's I I have to have it. Yeah. Although I was I I've, I'm the same way with a lot of things. I used to be the same way with CDs. I was buying CDs long after most people stopped doing it, just because I was like, yeah, I can have it. You know free here or listen to it there i'm like but i still need that physical copy i don't know it's just something i need to have oh yeah no yeah, and I, yeah. I did the same thing too so i, I totally understand where you're coming from oh and another do with thing books, though. Uh, I do with books go on Kyle. my four-year-old my four-year-old is uh read me a story read me a story you know how kids are mm-hmm. uh so we bought her the whole tuttle twins collection uh, she yes loves great series. i'm so glad you mentioned that because i've been meaning to get my hands on that for kate because she's three and a half now loves yeah, it yeah my kids are big yeah. fans of those too i i think what uh, they have, to, have they put the sixth one out yet i don't remember i think i have the first five um but yeah they're, they're those are great books did you see that poster that connor made uh it was never a book they were putting out it said the tunnel twins moved to somalia Yes. Oh my God. No. Yes. No, I haven't seen it's a, this. Dude. It was. It, it was. It was, great. Uh, it was. It was like a little. It was. It was just a graphic image he put up. Oh, this is funny. I'll put it up on the internet. I actually emailed him. Like, can you sell me a poster? Like, can you sell people a poster? And I will buy this. I want to hang it in my garage. He's like, oh no, it was just a. Uh, it was just a marketing funny on Facebook or internet or whatever. And I was like, dude, you're missing a market. I will give you money. <laughs> You're sitting on a gold mine, Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, totally. I would there's totally so that. many Connor's gold mines work, that man. we all sit on, and we just. Oh like, my it's like, god! Yeah, I'm but looking at no it one right would now. buy this that. Is insane. It, it is great, and, <laughs> but yeah. there's so yes. many people out there that would buy it. Yes. Before, think, I've got to stop pretending like I'm the the market. <laughs> before, 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 oh my god! Before he buried the lead, that's it. That, that's it. Let's reach out to him and see if he'll give one of us the rights, and then we'll we'll print it. We'll we'll sell it. There you go. Before, yeah, I was gonna say before we yeah. bear the lead any further, we're, we're talking about Connor Boyack from the uh, what is it, the Libertas Institute? Is that his organization? But he's the one who puts out the, something like that. He, he puts he's the one for, he he's the one who puts out the uh, the Tuttle Twin series, uh, a book books for children that are basically condensing uh, libertar- you know great libertarian works um, into digestible uh, versions for the kids uh, to learn, and also you know parents who are you know fully aware because it's like well the first one was the eye pencil one right. I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. The the Tuttle Twins and the Miraculous Pencil. So it, he basically took the um, yeah, that's my daughter's favorite one. The, the essay by Leonard Reed, I I pencil, and uh, you know made it into the this creature little, from Jekyll Island was another one. Yeah, the my kids, my the kid, law. Yeah, the law. Basically, that's the law. My my kids love the uh, what is it? The food truck one. The food, yeah, the food truck fiasco. Yes, my, my that's mm-hmm. my kids' favorite one. They love that one, and they love talking about. I how think they, the only one you're missing is the road to serfdom. They have, have yes, one yes, I was yes, just about yeah. to mention that. We, yeah, we yeah, like I said, okay, so, so the sixth one hasn't come out yet. So I yeah, I have all those ones. We have all those ones. My kids love the the food trucks fiasco one, and it's funny because they're one of their favorite parts of it is when the I don't remember if it's the kids or the adults realize that you know recognize that government's just taking the money and making things worse. Like they love repeating that. I'm like yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> That's yes, right. Yes. Yes. You're you're yeah. getting it. Brainwash your children like Dave brainwashes his children. It's so his obvious once you. Po- <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the heck? There's our bumper. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and a possible My show title. My girlfriend is not brainwashed. This was this was a joke. 
Yeah. You lie. You all, <laughs> you like all heard nothing. I, I recorded all that too, Dave. Kyle we have, we is a liar. The, we have all the proof of that too, so that's fine. <laughs> Shit. It's usually the pretty ones that say that, Dave. <laughs> oh. Anyway, yes, uh, those those books are great. So, yeah, I, I highly encourage people. I'll try to remember to throw a link in the show notes. Anybody who hasn't, check those out. Because they're, they're not just for kids either. You know, like I said, a lot of parents, you know, that's that's the, I remember him talking, hearing interviews with him talking about that fact. That's kind of why he designed them. So that parents who, you know, may have gotten the wrong story in school too <laughs> could actually learn along with their children because they, they would be more likely to start looking for additional information, you know, after that, be like, hmm, wait a minute, maybe I should look further into this. Well, yeah. Sometimes, like, your, your chains can get rattled real good just from something simple as a children's book. Well, it's, there aren't a lot of books out there like that, which is another reason I, I love the fact that Connor did them, because he's... You know. Yeah, I was fixing to say, I think that's the, those are really the only ones, because I remember uh, he was, Tom Woods did an interview with him a while back, and there was, that the whole reason why he did it was like, there really wasn't, I mean, there's was a market for him, but nobody was satisfying Andre, that market, nobody was. Your kid's about to go to uh, pre-K, right? Uh, yes. Statist. You can't give them, you can't give uh, them it's a private. It's read. a private organization, okay. guy. It runs out of a church, guy. <laughs> Even worse, you can't give them. You, you can't give them uh, books to read uh, there, can you? Like, uh, hey, no, you guys read this. I can't. Oh, Farsa, I can't. I wish. They're uh, they're cool. they're not to the point where they're going to be reading books yet. I think that's going to come when kindergarten. I was hits, talking about uh, to the, uh, the the teachers sometimes read books to the classes. Oh yeah, no. Good luck with that one. <laughs> no, well, I mean that that's what well, number one. They're not, that's not really what they're doing, uh, in particular, at this. Uh, this particular juncture at this grade level uh but number two yeah. i don't think i'd be able to get get away with that grade level yeah. great great i level. might well i don't know the eye pencil one probably would work but like i don't uh you never know yeah grade level pencil at one's good you're talking like a government schooler andre Come i was gonna on, say man. great grade level at three yeah. and a half years old just sounds so wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm categorizing people based on their cognitive ability sweet baby jesus no 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 oh the horror you ableist. I don't know. My four year old was explaining fractions to my dad about uh, six months ago. So nice. I don't know how much one has to do with the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I could see that. I wish Mike. My, my, so you read yeah, I mean, and it's, and it's all, and you were just I, like, you know, screw government, <laughs> screw the state. I'm done with it. Doesn't everybody? Uh, unless they're in denial. <laughs> I mean, if you make it all the way through without going, this shit's crazy. Yeah, I would course. hope so. I mean, I don't <laughs> like what other conclusion would you come to? Uh, there's a lot of people that come to to different conclusions because, see, the dissonance, it hurts so bad. It starts to burn, you know, between the ears, yeah. that empty space they have. <clears throat> as long as it's not they between just can't, the thighs. They man. can't take it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's always worse, especially for you. I can imagine mm -hmm. driving a truck all the time. You know that that type of feeling, Kyle. That would be terribly uncomfortable. <laughs> or maybe between the toes, <laughs> but either way. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right, though. They'll they'll uh, they'll come across something like that, and they'll just the, their brain shuts down. Like it just will not. They might even get all the way through it, but if they just will not listen to it, there's um, nothing. Like yeah. even finishing the book isn't going to be enough for them. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, I yeah, they're obviously because there's people who have tried to write refutations to things like that, you know, after reading it once and just going, oh, yeah, right. I got through it, but I disagree. Um, we actually had there was somebody who sent us something, they, right, Dave, through a through, through our through our uh, Facebook page. They actually had they decided to read something. It was was it an, I think it was Anatomy of the State. Yeah. And he wrote a couple, and you know, he obviously didn't agree with it because he wrote, he wrote an entire refutation and sent it back to us. Huge. We were, uh, yeah, wow. I remember what? this guy now. He wrote a big refutation, and then it was like, yeah, but taxation is theft. And then, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you're wrong. 
No. Well, weird. no, I, I, I still I wanted to get him on the show at some point. Uh, Andrew well, at, Wacker. At least you had one person that took the time to actually go through it. That's more than I've ever gotten out of anybody. Well, that's what I'm saying. That that I actually, you know, that's why I wanted to actually sit down and talk to him about it. I because I I read it briefly and I, I meant to go back and reread it again. But uh, you know, it just the fact, like like you said, the fact that he actually sat down and read it. You know, regardless of whether he agrees or not, at least that's a step that you know a lot of people aren't willing to take. Most people you know, will either just refuse to read it or get a little bit into it and have that reaction you guys were mentioning before about that whole, you know, oh, this is crap, this is crazy, and put it down before they finish it. Right. So, you know, credit where credit is due, at least getting through it and taking the time to write write something about it. That's even, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I'll only do that for, with commie literature. <laughs> I get about three, three, three paragraphs in and I'm like, I I've don't already th- torn every paragraph apart. I don't think I'm done with this trash. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't make a habit a of reading in crayon. I don't think he's a commie, and he's a, <laughs> he's a, he, he, I believe. Well, he, see, I was in the army, so I can, I can, I can read. No, no, I was just crayon, talking about so it's not a, not a problem for me. Crayon. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was written in crayon, so I mean, that was the only way we could possibly understand anything. So I, I'm very uh-huh. familiar with this. So what do you think about them <laughs> them ban- banning transsexuals out of your precious army there, Andre? Fuck yeah, it didn't I'm actually, all for it. It didn't actually happen. It was just Trump spouting his it mouth didn't? off. No, tr- it was just Trump tweeting, and the Joint Chief the Joint Chiefs put out a statement today, I think, that said uh, there's not going to be any change of the transgender policy despite the tweets of the president earlier. You know, whatever. Um, so it was basically he did then. it was yeah it was Trump trolling. Hmm. Well, he he's slowly outing who is fighting him. So like he'll say something, he'll see who in the government is saying no, 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 and then he's just because they have full they have one party rule right now, so he can just basically fire anybody he wants, get a yes man in there. They they don't understand the position that they're in right now. Well, That's why Rex it's... Tillerson just had to step back. Like he probably said, I don't like something he's doing. It was all right. Well. There's the door, buddy. Well, well, specifically within with regards to the military, the president is the commander in chief of the military, so he can Literally. dismiss and nominate people for positions within the military at will. Like there, that guy there's buried no himself basically. Yeah, so I mean, if the joint chiefs, like if he if he decided to go through with it, he could just fire the joint chiefs and and promote people from within the ranks to those positions that That's are going That's what to happened, carry out his saying. policy. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're. Boy, I'm glad right. we got rid of that whole monarchy thing. <laughs> well, no, it's a. It, it's, it, think of it. It won't happen. It w- I don't think it would happen anyway. <laughs> even if it came, even if it came to that, I don't think that would happen because there's enough. No. Um, at least, at least publicly, there's enough chatter from the. Uh, the complete wackos you would have to get rid of so many people in the military well the, yeah number one number yes. two number two there's there's Good. there's still so much there's still so much Excellent. chatter from the uh the wack you guys have the whole the no extreme clue. wackos on the left like pelosi and all them about um mm-hmm. about impeachment and trying to get him out of there that oh yeah he, if he go, going on no no but i'm saying if, if no 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 I, no if, okay let me finish <laughs> If, on, if he sorry. if he went a, if he went ahead and tried to uh, tried to do that, the uh, you know all, all the all the uh, Joint Chiefs you know anybody anybody in anybody in that position all they'd have to do is just turn to the Democrats and go yeah we got your back right now so uh, let's work together and they'll make sure that they ramp up that instead and get the focus okay. off of you know just the political the game will be played will out revolt right. on its leaders yeah exactly well, okay at, at, and at the and at the risk of of putting too much faith in the the institution of the state of state government. Uh, I mean, yeah. I granted they're not known for following their own rules, but like, there's nothing to prosecute them on for impeachment. So there's, I mean, as I said yeah. before, and it's and Kyle mentioned, you know, thank God we got rid of the monarchy. NDNA, this NDAA, is, it's yeah, over. This is this is one of the few. This is one of the few cases where I will I will go to bat for the command structure that exists as it exists in the military. Now I'm not really a fan of having a civilian in charge. Boo, no, boo right. this man! I know, right. USA, <laughs> USA. You have to understand the situation we're in. Even if you're a military general, okay, the FBI can black bag you and just pop you in the head and kill you wantonly now on the president's order. NDAA was signed. It is complete. Like it's over. Like <laughs> oh, you you went in a completely different direction than I was going to go in, Dave. But. This Even is if you're true. in the military, it doesn't matter. Like no, no, the no. FBI you, yeah, can you, kill you, anyone you, with impunity at this point in the game. Right, but you 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 went off on a completely different tangent than what I was fixing yeah. to say. 
I don't know. Go ahead and finish up, Andre. But no, all I, all I was fixing to say was the way the command structure works in the military, I'll go to bat for that because it, it exists for the purpose of issuing orders to subordinates in the same way that management structure exists in that same fashion. And I don't think, yeah. You, yeah. you know, a president exercising unilateral power over legislation, yeah, whatever. But the military is the one sphere where that is and should be the case, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know what I, mean? uh, I, nah, I, I, I don't follow it, but I suppose there's a lot of people bickering about this. Oh, yeah. It's there's just mass confusion yeah. right now. But what it is, is I, yeah. I think he's slowly trying to out everybody that's in the government right now that is yeah. opposing. Oh, he is. It's a think, right? no, it's that's what, what he's good at. Yeah, but I, I think I think he was actually just trolling the left with this one. Because <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, how, 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 how do you get the yeah how do you get yeah how do you military get, how, yeah how do you get the how do you get the left to support the military and demand that people be allowed to become allowed yeah to become and I, I've seen like a ton of a ton of memes following that same how line many of, military of dictatorships are leftists hmm oh yeah that's I've got right, a all question <laughs> we might have I've, an answer. I've, I've, I've Go got ahead, a, uh, a a pretty strong question I hope you have an answer to. During all this bickering and confusion and uh, left throwing shit at right and vice versa, <clears throat> what can you fellas and I be building on the blockchain while they're not fucking looking? Well, I can't build anything on the blockchain because I'm worthless when it comes to I'm that sort of thing. I'm, I'm slowly doing some stuff in the shadows right now. Why? While they're not paying attention, while they're mad at each other. Let's, let, let, let's do some shit while they're looking way, 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 way over there. No, I they, mean I'm they, I'm on Steam they, and writing articles all the time and putting my. They're not my looking at the people doing those. the left right thing or the the whatever you're, the the horseshoe thing you're talking about politically. They don't care about those people. Yeah, they care about the people who aren't doing. Yeah, it. they are. They actually like, are I looking mean, at the crypto yeah. world right now. Pretty, I mean, they're they're hardcore about hard, that now. I hard. Mean, Think about a movie theater where there's armed guards everywhere, and if you're not watching the movies, they're like, "Why isn't that guy watching the movies?" <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like, okay, we need to go investigate that non-watcher right there. The the, the hey, that's, hey, guy, guy, why aren't you watching the movie? The, Turn your head, watch the movie. Yeah. The 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 people basically the people engaged in the left right paradigm to the extent that they're at each other's throats. Yeah, your Dave's right. They don't give a crap about them. That's where they want everybody. They want people focused on that so they so they don't see what else is going. You know what what goes on behind the curtain essentially. Yeah, bread and circus. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, mm -hmm. but they. I mean, you just look at the things like the uh, the takedown of of the Alpha Bay. And uh, apparently the other the other one, um, Hansa, the two dark uh, dark net sites that yeah, got taken him. down. Um, one Didn't of them. Didn't that guy die in prison? Well, well, yeah. The uh, alleged. Well, the one of the alleged. Some of this has to do with the pedophile stuff. This this cracking off. Well, one of the, one of the uh, like. Okay, Dave. Dave. <laughs> Dave interjects the pedophile thing into just about every every conspiracy theory. Um, the uh, I don't I don't know if that's the case, so I'm not going to go there. What I was just going to say that yes, one of the alleged uh, administrators of the Alpha Bay was caught in was uh, was grabbed in Thailand and put in a cell was put in a cell for a while, and I think he was they were setting him up to extradite him, and he allegedly committed suicide in his cell. But the other yeah, like the story I heard was pretty much they don't want another Ross Ulbricht. Well, they of course they, well, don't, yeah, they don't because pu don't. public sentiment has definitely yeah you know started to shift more and more you know sympathy towards Ross. Um, you know, it's still not a huge unfortunately. Thank God. You know, oh well, yeah, it's a, what happened to him yeah, is well, horrible. Yeah, I was I was fixing to say it's it's not really a huge issue to people, but the people that do know tend to side with Ross against the government. So. Exactly. So yeah, they yeah. they can't they, they can't risk another one of those. So that's that's definitely fishy. But the the part that I don't know, I'm saying the dude might have got Clinton. Do you know what I mean? No, that's exactly oh, that's did. that's that's what that's what that's and that's why I meant by fishy. But the the whole um yeah the fa the fact the second part of the story that came out a little a little after that that I didn't realize um, until a little bit later was the the fact that they had actually the governments had actually grabbed I guess it was Europol and the uh, the the US DOJ working together. They took they took another site. They took control of another site a month before everything. Like basically, when everybody, all the uh, as, they, as they referred to them, Alpha Bay ref refugees left once the site because the site went down on the Fourth of July, which was you know kind of weird. <laughs> and then uh, people quickly started to try to find other you know other avenues to purchase their whatever they were trying to get through the Alpha Bay, and they had the governments had control of the the other so this other site Hansa, and basically just get grabbed a whole bunch of information about a whole bunch of new people. <laughs> 
And uh, like that, Damn. actually, that's actually sca- even scarier to me. So, uh, you know, because as you were saying before, Dave, they, you know, pretty much this, the CIA and or the FBI could pretty much always kill with impunity, whether here or abroad and for whatever justification and not even always under the president's approval um, or. You and know, they can find out whatever they want to find out. The inf- the, there is no information that's not exactly from them. Yeah. So, so do you think it was state agents that did this big uh, Ethereum multi-sig wallet hit? It got uh, Swarm City. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, that one I've only heard know. briefly about, but I'm not sh- I'm not sure. I mean, it's that stuff like that is usually you know using Occam's Shit razor. You, yeah, I was gonna say using like Occam's yeah. razor. It's usually more likely the uh, the private um, thief versus the uh, the government thief. So there's no telling, guys. Oh no, I, I don't know. There's a lot know. of stuff going in the background. I don't obviously, know. obviously like all the cryptos are are kind of down a. a, a pretty heavy actually um down well doesn't, uh, have, doesn't that have more to do with the, the yeah i was gonna possible say hard fork the segwit so, so, soft soft fork but no B- bitcoin's back up again today man it's it was cruising up, up to 2700 it's up but it's not up from where it was you know it's up to almost 2700 uh, a couple days ago it was up around 2759 yeah, yeah man. it's yeah. only at 25 right now so 25 what Hold on, I'll get a fresh price right now. For well, you guys. that and the other thing, say, what actually, what, what, is like what, market correction. Well, actually, it's rebounding happen. pretty hard. That's it's what I said. Twenty six ninety six, right? Yeah, so. that's what I'm saying, man. It, it took I think off earlier today. Everybody's kind of figured out right now that it's going to be kind of a softer fork, and there's not as much risk as everybody thought there was back when it dropped below two grand. So I, I don't, yeah. I don't think there's going to be a huge investment opportunity like. I know I was hoping for like if it got close to a thousand dollars again, I was going to start, you know. Yeah. Well, you can always <laughs> selling kidneys. Can't, can't you always, selling kidneys yeah. and can't you always jump over on the? You can always jump over the fork one and hope, hope that takes off, right? Uh, or the one that doesn't fork yeah. is it the bit the Bitcoin coin? Is that the the BCC? Uh, Bitcoin Cash? Cash. Because I know uh, Bitcoin dot com. Uh, their CEO was talking about. Well, you know, this is this is definitely something I'd get behind. So I mean, there's there seems like That's there's a decent amount right? of support for it if that happens. What? But I. I mean, I'm I'm a crypto newbie, so you guys know more about this crap than I do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Basically, know that much more than you. <laughs> hold on tight, but don't let it go. <laughs> if you cling too tightly, you're gonna lose, gonna control. lose control. As yeah. we have lost control of this episode, because the two of you are now singing. But yeah, <laughs> the podcast has a life of its own. I'm a peacock, man. You got to let me fly. Yeah. Wait a minute. I don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do fly. <laughs> they glide, um, sort of. Hover, ish. <laughs> anyway, so come on, you guys haven't uh, seen the other guys. Come on. I have. But so it's cool. You're gonna have all of us on your show one by one uh, and ask us really <laughs> deep questions, and I'm good, looking forward to good. it. Dude. Uh, yeah. So actually, yeah, Is we Kyle should. Kyle lagging. We should probably. We should probably get wrapping up. Tonight. Yeah, Kyle's lagging. Sweet. Way to go, Kyle. <laughs> That's what I figured was happening. Oh, oh Jesus. All yeah, right. I've, I've, I've got a habit of uh, crashing the party and bringing folks down. <laughs> no, no. Wouldn't have it any other way, boss. Yes. <laughs> any hoodle. Uh, yeah, so we should, we should probably get wrapping up anyway. But, Kyle, before we get going, first of all, this is uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming on, man, because uh, this, is, this has been fun. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. And... Uh, Definitely, uh, pl- 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 plug your plug your uh, pl- plug your podcast. I'll I'll say that I definitely recommend people listening to it. I've I've been a fan of it since you started. So uh, you know, it's uh, good stuff. Great audio quality. One of the one of the best intros ever. Um, that guy is uh, was that Jerry James? He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> your intro kicks ass <laughs> um so uh yeah so go ahead and uh, anything else you want to say before we get going yeah no just check out the show at the um already had a, a lot of really good guests on i mean we're we're only seven episodes into to this whole project man but but i'm loving it i'm looking forward to continuing it and uh i'm actually looking for guests like shots well, whatever would uh, take an individual toward more personal liberty. Um, we've, we've covered already stuff like homeschooling. Uh, I've got a good crypto episode coming up in a day or two and things of that nature. But uh, yeah, check it out. TheLibertyForge.com. Excellent. Uh, Dave, Andre, anything else you got before we get going? 
Make piracy great again. MGPA um, or MPGA. Uh, start working for yourself. Never work for anybody else unless you're getting paid way too much. In Bitcoin. <laughs> In Bitcoin. Yes. Uh, That's just something I've realized lately. So yes. I prefer to be paid in Doge. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's on no. my resume. We'll, we'll accept <laughs> payment in Doge, Dogecoin. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm not going there. I'll, uh, I, I, have, I have BIPs. That, that's enough on the low end for me, so I'll stick with those. That's right. Oh, you <laughs> are BIP rich, man. I am, man. If, if, if Bitcoin ever takes off, I'll, I'll be in good shape. You know, <laughs> one, Rolling in that virtual currency, boss. One, one of these days. One of these days. It, 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 it did get taken over by another developer, so hopefully they do something with it. We'll see. Anywho, so yeah, so once again, uh, Kyle, thanks for coming on, and people definitely go check out his show. Uh, all of our content can be found at our new website, the what is it, solpodcast.org. Patreon is still there, of course, and uh, thank you to everybody who continues to patronize that. <laughs> we definitely appreciate it, it helps keep the lights on around here, and um. You know, and again, uh, and thanks again to our friend Paul Gordon, who uh, is has helped us out with uh, tra hopefully transitioning to a, a different hosting company, but helping us get the site back up and running. You know, that we uh, we wouldn't have that if it wasn't for him. You know, since Dave kept dropping the ball forever. So, anyway, uh, thank that's what I do, man. This is true. This is true. So, you know, which is ironic after the advice you gave everybody. Uh, <laughs> All right, so this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com.